Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Cloud Tool Time webinar. Joining us today, we have Jordan Pavlov to discuss building white label platforms with Eclipse Dirigible. If you have any questions for Jordan as we move through today's presentation, feel free to ask them in the chat or the Ask a Questions tab. Uh, uh, Jordan will be doing the presentation first and then answering questions and then doing a demo. And feel free to ask questions during the demo as well. So without further delay, Jordan, over to you. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So let's start with the presentation. I'll try to keep it in my style and um, have a brief presentation, like 10-15 uh, minutes. And after that, we will have plenty of time for the demo. And today I'll be talking about how actually you could build a weight label platform with Eclipse Dirigible, or actually how Eclipse Dirigible is kind of white label platform. Uh, so today I'll be speaking as an open source fan, which I'm very proud to be, and as a project lead of Eclipse Dirigible. So I've been project lead and committer in Eclipse Dirigible for many years. And recently I'll be speaking also from the position position of CTO of Codebex. So uh, there will be kind of uh, two guys speaking in, <laughs> in that presentation. So uh, without further ado, let's continue with the main part. And uh, if you uh, are interested, actually after uh, the, the, the webinar, I'll be sharing the uh, presentation online on Twitter and on other channels as well. So you could also find some links inside the presentation and you can play around with them. So uh, for example, you could uh, take a look about a brief history of uh, Dirigible, which we recently published in the Eclipse Foundation news uh, letter. Also a brief comparison between Eclipse Dirigible TIA and Visual Studio Code. And last but not least from Codebex point of view, how we actually uh, built a uh, white label platforms and how that uh, business model works. So uh, I'll try to explain it very quick. So what is the white label business model? It's kind of a model that involves three parties. So on the one hand side, we have a manufacturer, which creates a generic or the so-called white label uh, product. So you can uh, imagine it as the white uh, cup of coffee on the um, uh, left, left side of uh, that diagram. Uh, in between, we have uh, the retailer, which uh, buys the white label uh, product, uh, resells it and rebrands it and sells it as its own. So this is on the right hand side. So you can imagine it as just putting the logo of the company, some additional, uh, let's say added features and so on and then sells it directly to the end customer. So uh, for the end customer, it should be, uh, so he shouldn't be um, interested whether it comes from the retailer or from the manufacturer. So for him, uh, this is a product coming from the retailer and he doesn't even know that uh, it was essentially white labeled and uh, produced from a third party company. So in, in brief, this is uh, the, the business model. So then the question what's in for the retailer and why uh, as I as a retailer should uh, consider this uh, business model as one for improving my business. So there are a lot of benefits and maybe the most obvious one is that you could actually attract new customer and retain existing ones by just simply increasing the number of products that you could offer. So uh, you could offer a product that you didn't have the time or the resources to develop or to um, build yourself, or just simply you could uh, rebrand and resell a white label product, for example. <coughs> so in that way, uh, by expanding the, the portfolio, you could also attract uh, more and bigger customers and basically just scale out the whole business that you have. And uh, <coughs> uh, the great thing is uh, being quite label means that it goes uh, right under your real brand. So basically this would be a new feature, a new product uh, with your brand on it. So uh, no white label, no nothing. It's uh, just your company with your logo and uh, your branding. Of course, in the end, this would uh, result in an increasing uh, monthly revenue streams and uh, last but not least uh, as said in the beginning you could focus on what really matters and and, and that in your case would be actually uh, selling the product instead of developing it 
So it uh, just goes to the marketing department instead of the software development department. And this would be a huge, huge uh, saving on the costs for developing and uh, offering new products. So uh, switching to our topic actually, so why uh, Dirigible is a white label platform and how that uh, works in the software world. So we saw it, how it works, for example, for uh, coffee cups. So you produce a white uh, coffee cup and then just rebranding. So how, how that is possible with uh, software and uh, with Dirigible. Uh, so uh, I intentionally chose that diagram uh, to show you, uh, this is uh, architecture of Eclipse Dirigible. It's kind of old one, but it really shows uh, the the main ingredients here. So we have uh, multiple layers and we have uh, multiple components. And um, basically, the one of the basic principles of uh, Dirigible is uh, to have a modularity and componentization. So we have a lot of components and, and modules which could play around nicely with each other. Uh, that being said, it means um, that you could uh, basically take some of the modules of Dirigible and build your own platform and redistribute it as you want. So in order to make that easy, uh, because uh, right now we have more than 300 uh, Maven modules, uh, we created these groups. So you can think about them like the Spring Boot starters. So they're like uh, 20 or so packages, which could be used independently in your application to have some parts of dirigible in it and integrate. Or even uh, going one step further, you could uh, take a part of our relink modules, which are actually tailored extendable packages with the whole whole project in it. So here we're talking about Eclipse Dirigible dependencies, Eclipse Dirigible groups and uh, Eclipse Dirigible Relink packages. So all of that is being open source in the under the, the Eclipse Foundation. So uh, a few examples how we actually uh, built a white label platform in Codebex. Uh, so now I'm speaking as the city of Codebex. Uh, we have uh, like uh, this projects uh, which are again open source because we love open source and we continue to uh, contribute and uh, deliver in the open source world so we think that is the right way to do business in the end is uh, the first one is the codebix genet genetilis platform it is kind of a generic uh, data platform so where you can put your uh, analysis of your dna and uh, do some interesting findings and um, uh, processes around that. So it's uh, really nice and really interesting. We also are going to put some uh, huge amount of data in it. So it will be also interesting uh, from that point of view. And if you go to the Codebix uh, GitHub uh, organization, you could look up for that project and a few other white label platforms as well. But this one is maybe the most prominent one. The second uh, one, is a codebex, codebex Chronos again open source uh, project, uh, and it it is for this compatible environment for SAP HANA access applications, which uh, I think in the last uh, pre, uh, in the last webinar that we have in April I shared about, and uh, back then it was known like a project access key coming from SAP. Uh, that project was uh, officially continued in the Codebex Chronos repository so you can think of it like a fork like a uh, uh, flowable and uh, activity and the third white label platform that we could we can share about about because not of not all of our uh, products are open source and uh, some of our customers are uh, not willing to share some information about it but the ones that won't uh, are here listed and this is the Verato BPM platform. So this is actually a very interesting thing on top of, um, or actually dirigible is uh, being used as a business process uh, uh, orchestration platform, let's put it that way, on top of blockchain. So this is really combining the, the business on uh, the business processes uh, that are um, very uh, familiar and known in the Java world through flowable activity and so on, and the blockchain technology, which is the new emerging technology uh, that we're observing right now. So we're really trying to combine the two, and this is under the Averato BPM uh, 
BPM uh, project, which is actually part of uh, Quantiro, which is uh, a separate company from Codebix. So uh, with that being said, I will uh, be quickly switching to the demo, but uh, just before that, here I have one site that you could really uh, play around with it after the, the, the session. And here we have some nice videos about how you could actually with Dirigible build a mobile app and you can take them, uh, take, take, take a look at them in YouTube, how to build a local platform and, uh, <laughs> sorry, how actually the local platform works and uh, how one web application built with that low, low code platform looks like. So without further ado, I'll be switching to the demo. So here is the familiar um, digital site. I will have uh, this split screen. I know that it's not uh, very nice, but uh, you'll see after a few seconds why I need that. So uh, if you go to dirigible.io, you could actually do the demo yourself. And after the presentation, you could have in a matter of minutes your own white label platform and you can rebrand it as you want. So <laughs> if I go to the drop down menu, or if you see it in full screen, there it will be on the top of the screen uh, and switch to the samples section. Then again, going to the drop down menu, to the tutorials, customizations, and custom stack. You see that we have a se separate section for it. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, expand the right-hand side of the screen so the Visual Studio Code will be more important right now and here will be mostly copy and paste. And during the process, I'll try to explain what I'm doing. So first of all, I've created one empty directory, this custom stack, and in it, I'm going to create a new file. So the first file will be a pom.xml. So, uh, most of you as a Java developers should be familiar what uh, this file is about. And if we take a quick, quick look on, on it, we could see that it is uh, relatively straightforward. It has a few properties, one of which is the dirigible version, which will be used. Of course, the Java version, which can be changed and a few others about the logging in general. Uh, on top of that, we have this one module. So we are talking here about multi multi-module Maven project. And uh, this one is expecting to have a link module. So the actually the second file will be the pom.xml of, uh, of uh, that module, of the link module. So here we will have our uh, release artifact. And uh, maybe I uh, missed to mention, but we're building a Spring Boot application on top, on top of Dirigible and we'll have uh, the end result as a jar file, which is uh, which which can be run. So uh, having a look at uh, that pomexima, we can see that uh, it's not that big one. And uh, first, having a look at the dependency section, this um, uh, this Eclipse uh, Dirigible dependency for uh, the Spring server, and we have some additional uh, dependencies for the login framework itself and one from the Spring Boot uh, configuration processor. So uh, the other thing with uh, Spring projects is that you have uh, this uh, Spring Boot Maven plugin, and uh, here we have this uh, main class that will actually run our uh, Spring application. So uh, going down on the tutorial, <coughs> here we have to create uh, another file for the dirigible properties itself. So, uh, Dirigible has a lot of properties which can actually be seen on the Dirigible side, but as, uh, the left hand side of the screen is very tiny right now. I don't want to switch it and to show you, but if you type in Google Eclipse Dirigible Environment Variables, you could see that we have like uh, more than 100 environment variables that can be configured. So just uh, copy paste a few of the essential uh, parameters. So for example, here I'll uh, tail dirigible, which should be the JavaScript engine that uh, we want to use, and uh, that is uh, this optimized Gradium JavaScript handler that we recently developed. It's on top of GraalJS, and it provides a uh, uh, few customizations on top of it. It teases the, the debugging and the development process as well. So if you have any questions uh, which weren't answered or you think about later, you can 
actually join us on Slack and write write it in our channel. So you could find the Slack link in the Dirigible tutorial site. Great. Uh, so we should provide also few static files. So uh, the first one is the index HTML file. So this is the this would be the the home page of our application. Okay, so it is fairly straightforward. It just redirects to the home endpoint. So we have like a home endpoint uh, uh, listener uh, or ser service you could think of in Dirigible that uh, actually uh, redirects to the web ID by default, or if it, it or if it was configured, it could uh, redirect to the application homepage. So you would need that uh, static index HTML. And then we have this um, index busy page, which is uh, actually uh, shown during the loading time of Dirigible. So uh, once we initially started, as Dirigible has a few uh, jobs that has to be run to initialize the database and so on and so on. And to apply the artifact states, we have to, late, to wait a little bit. So we show this nice, uh, business in, uh, index uh, busy page and of course it could be customized for example in in that case i'm uh, setting the title to preparing your custom platform environment or of course it could be something else great so the third uh, point we will be skipping because uh, right now i don't want to create uh, their pages but in general here is the way how, how to do it it is in the same flow uh, okay, uh, so the next step is to create the application YAML file for the Spring Boot itself. So I'm creating this file here and I'll go quickly over it. So you could see that uh, it has some parameters for CXF, like uh, which is the service, which is the, the classes that should be scanned. This could be extended as well. Um, and so on. So here you could put your all Spring configuration that is needed. On top of it, we have also integration with Keycloak, which uh, can be really easily enabled. So you could just uh, put in the environment Keycloak, um, uh, dirigible Keycloak enabled, uh, the environment variable set to true, and you uh, should also provide this uh, for actually five environment variables as well, like the confidential port, the client ID, the um key clock server url and of course the the realm and we have this uh, default roles so like everyone like uh operator and and developer so of course they can be changed great and last but not least we should uh, create the main class or i should say the public static void main method for the spring application it is uh, fairly straightforward. It uh, is set to analyze uh, the Eclipse dirigible class, so it should uh, run out of the box. Great. And finally, what uh, should I do is to build the project. And uh, I can do it uh, via the terminal. Or actually, yeah, I don't know why, but uh, there is not. It's not showing the run or the debug uh, highlight, and I'll have to do it manually. So I'm going to trigger Maven clean install the old-fashioned way. And of course, <laughs> here is some issue about it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Of course, maybe I haven't saved all all files. Let me quickly go through them. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so now the build is fine. And the next step is to go to the link and target uh, folder and to execute jar minus jar. Great, so we can see in the terminal here that the Eclipse Dirigible is starting and I can open it in a new tab. Just to open it, go to localhost 8080 and you could see that uh, actually Eclipse Dirigible has started. 
and you could see that uh, basically this is uh, the default eclipse dirigible so without anything uh, the difference is that if you go to the help and about uh, menu you could see that it is not saying eclipse dirigible but custom platform so so far it's not much, much of a modification but uh, you uh, you have uh, let's say your own distribution of eclipse dirigible so if you want just to pinpoint some version that's all that you need uh, great so uh, continuing with the demo i'll be going uh, to the next uh, tutorial which is about the branding maybe the most interesting part so i'm going to stop the uh, process here and close the terminal great so uh what i'm going to do now is uh, to create as i said in the beginning this is a multi-module maven project so i have to create my second module and it is uh called modules uh, yeah i know that's a very original name but we love to use some generics uh you could see that um, it's not much of a pom xml file but it has uh, this uh, modules here uh, and uh, we'll be creating uh, them in a few seconds so we have the branding model and this module will actually be used to uh, replace uh, the branding of eclipse dirigible and in, as part of the next steps, we'll be actually excluding from the um, Spring server dependency that we have uh, the default brand, branding, and we'll be using our own. And we have this, uh, let's say, utility module that we call uh, all. So, um, as for the next tutorials, uh, we'll be needing it uh, instead of adding all. Uh, dependencies in the link on the POM XML, we'll, we'll group them in this uh, all modules and uh, we'll just refer in the link POM XML, just, uh, just this one. So this is just for usability. So let's create first the, the all module. Okay. Again, it's uh, fairly simple. So it has a uh, dependency to the uh branding module which uh, we haven't created yet and it is a uh, uniting call of uh modules uh, here in, in one custom stock module so uh dependency great so let's continue with the branding one okay and you can see it's uh, just a maven model that is packaging itself as a jar and you will say okay what uh, should we put in it and first let's close all of this and continue to the next one so uh, here we have uh, actually the branding so the logo and the text in uh, eclipse dirigible can be actually configured through this uh, javascript file and in order to to do so we have to create uh, that um, branding branding.js file so i'll just expand it a bit in order to see so you can see uh the structure we have uh on the top level we have the main palm xml the link and the modules inside the modules we have uh the o uh, module and the branding module and inside the branding module, we have this CRC main resources. And inside the resources and the meta if we have uh, the special dirigible folder. So all resources which are under meta if and, and dirigible will be handled uh, by dirigible. So uh, we should uh, put the resources that we want to be executed and handled by dirigible inside that, that, that folder. ID branding is. Uh, just uh, the name that is that dirigible is, is is expecting so it's actually inside dirigible terms this is uh, the project name of the project so uh, id branding and uh, the file name is branding.js so let just copy paste uh, that javascript file Oops. okay so you could see that this is one javascript constant uh, constant object which has uh, a few properties in it like uh, the icon the url of course uh, this could be changed 
to something else, the name of the platform. So this will be the name that will be displayed on the uh, left corner of the screen, the brand, and also you could provide some icons. And for the logo, you could see that we have this custom slash stack dot SVG file, which we are going to create. So this is the file. It is essentially in the same folder as the branding JS, and it's just some SVG file. Okay. So continuing further. So we have to touch a bit the relink pom XML because we introduced this uh, modules or dependency. So going to the link to the pom XML, we have to copy this custom stack dependency. All right. So this is uh, the custom stack module so that uh, we created. It will unite all uh, modules in in one and you can have it here right in this way so the second step is uh, actually to exclude the default branding and we have to modify the dirigible dependency like that so you could see uh, dirigible slash id slash ui slash branding is uh, being excluded and you could uh, here for example put uh, multiple things like uh, for example the whole web id or you could uh, exclude uh, some parts of it like uh, some perspectives some views or yeah some uh, thing from the backend so we have like 300 plus dependencies so there are a lot of to exclude and this is the one way of building um, white label platforms. The, the second way is actually to use the dirigible groups, which is kind of uniting in the same flavor, like the modules or some core dependencies in a, in a vertical scenarios, in a vertical way. So you could put like a dirigible database, dirigible JavaScript and a few others. And on top of it, uh, you could uh, build the game. But I prefer that way of having one all-in-one <laughs> dependency and then excluding uh, things that I don't need. Great, so then <coughs> the next step is again to trigger the build process. So I'm going to do Maven clean install again. And again, navigate to the target folder and on the custom stack spring jar file. So again, I'm going to the localhost 8080. It's not started yet. And here is uh, the index busy page that is uh, loading, that's showing while dirigible is, is loading, or, or should I say the custom platform in that case. So we should uh, wait a little bit. And after a few seconds, it should be loaded. Yeah, maybe to check something in the log. No, everything seems okay. Oops, okay, right now we're ready. And if we refresh uh, the web page, because I initially loaded uh, with the default branding, and after that I had to refresh it in order to clean up the cache. Uh, so you could see that here it uh, says custom stack, and we have uh, the provided SVG uh, file right here. And for simplicity, we haven't provided uh, the um, uh, file icon on the top screen, but of course this can, can be done as well. So as you can see, again, this is um, actually dirigible, basic dirigible, and uh, it has just uh, the branding change. So great, uh, what should be the next uh, step? Actually, the next step would be to provide some additional functionality beyond just uh, the, the branding itself. And uh, in order to do that, I'm going to uh, switch to the next tutorial, which is about how to build actually <coughs> a Java facade uh, and a JavaScript API on top of it. Uh, so inside the Rishbo, 
most of the the code is uh, or regarding the JavaScript APIs is uh, underneath Java code. So you can imagine it in the phone where you have a Java code with some essential functionality, like for example, sending mail, connecting to the database, uh, writing response uh, to the um, HTTP request and so on. And on top of it, we have a JavaScript uh, kind of wrapper, which access directly uh, thanks to the Graal.js and the recently Gralium uh, JavaScript uh, handler, uh, the Java classes and it uh, executes uh, both the, the the JavaScript and the in the Java at the same time. So uh, again, what we we'll, uh, create, we we'll create a new model. So now you understand why we have this all uh, modules and why we have <laughs> so many POM XML files. So I'm going to to save it, and uh, then we're going to provide our <coughs> sorry our uh, greetings for save. So it will be quite simple one. And let me just copy paste the Java code. It has one public static string method which is uh, called get string and just returns one hard coded string welcome to eclipse dirigible of course it can be anything as i said it can connect to for example to your erp and get some reports and whatever so here could be the heavyweight logic itself and uh, i'm going to expose it to the dirigible layer via this greeting uh, .js so i'm going to create uh, that file so as you can see uh, first, this is a Java file. It is CRC main Java, and then the package name, and then the greeting for set. And uh, additionally to it, I'm going to create in the CRC main resources, again, under the meta uh, dirigible special folder, uh, uh, a folder called custom stack, or in dirigible terms, uh, this would be the name of the project. And after that would be the name of the file which in that case is uh, greeting.js. Great. So I'm going to quickly copy paste the content of the file and I'll uh, try to explain quickly what it, uh, what it is uh, doing. Uh, so we have this uh, get message um, function, which is exposed and can be used after that uh, in your custom code. Uh, inside of it, we have uh, two variables, the username and the greeting. Um, the username is actually taken from one uh, dirigible built-in facade, the user facade, and obviously it uh, returns the name of the user. As you can see, it's uh, referred by a fully qualified name. So we have the package name, the name of the, the class, and after that, the static uh, method. And for uh, no static methods, after, of course, you can write here, for example, new, then instantiate the, the class, and so on. So it's uh, as you do in Java, but you have to specify the, the fully qualified name. Uh, for uh, packages, which are not starting with com or org, or I think there are a few other uh, uh, domain names uh, that were allowed by default, you have to write the packages uh, with upper P uh, keyword. And after that, it is basically in the same way. So uh, we're here, we're referring to our facade which is uh, here. So you could see, uh, come on. So you could see it is inside IO, dirigible custom platform facade, and then the name of the facade. And here we are referring to it in exactly the same way. Uh, and uh, we're returning just some concatenation of the messages that we have hello the username and then the greeting that we created in the in the java in the java class great and in order to uh, get the whole scheme working we have to update the modules uh, pom xml so in order to build also the facade uh, module so i'm adding it here and i'm triggering the build again so it will take a few seconds it's done and if i go again to the target folder and 
execute <coughs> the Spring application, it will start in a few seconds. Yeah, and one thing that I forgot, so <laughs> uh, is also to add the facade dependency in the relink. Uh, so actually to the modules O folder, so it should be put here or of course, in, uh, the relink module could be modified. The result will be actually the same, but we prefer to put that uh, dependency in that uh, in that whole module. So again, let's quickly rebuild the whole thing. Then go to relink target. Uh, again, execute the Spring jar file. And at the bottom of the screen, you could see that we have this uh, sample code that we are going to give a try. <coughs> so let's open uh, Divisible in your tab. Okay, so it is uh, loading. So maybe we should wait a few more seconds. And of course, during the live demo, it uh, takes most of the time to load. <laughs> and during the preparation, it starts like in a second, but yeah, so the rest of the live demo. So should wait a little bit. So we have uh, one more synchronizer to finish and we're not. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a new project in Dirigible and name it demo, for example. I'll create new JavaScript server service. Uh, so again, it will be demo and I'm going to open it. You could see it's uh, fairly straightforward. It uh, returns um, hello world in the response. And if I save it and switch to the preview tab, I can see the result of the execution. For all of you that are familiar with Dirigible, you know that you can take that link and open it in your tab. And this is a server-side JavaScript being executed, so you can consider it as part of uh, your REST API. So, I'm going to uh, paste the sample code that I have, and it's not much of uh, much different from the hill world that we had, uh, with uh, the difference that here we have this greetings API. So uh, in Dirigible, this uh, HTTPv4 response is uh, the API that is uh, the JavaScript API that is taking care for the response. We have few other APIs like. Uh, if you go to dirigible.io API, so we have a, a bunch of them for the uh, database, uh, working with the HTTP, IO, Kafka, messaging, and so on and so on. But yeah, so this is our custom API. It's about greetings and it is call, calling the get message function that we exposed. And hopefully if everything went okay after I, I, I save, so I'm clicking uh, command S, you could see that in the preview, the message changed to uh, from hello world to hello guest, which is uh, the name of the user that I'm uh, logged in currently. And if I enable Keycloak, I'll be able to uh, log in with uh, my email via uh, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, whatsoever. So it depends what I configure. And then the hard coded message from our Java facade. So, this is the welcome Eclipse Dirigible message that we have. So, this is about how, uh, if you want uh, uh, to, to build um, custom JavaScript API for Dirigible for your own, for your own uh, pattern, how actually you could do it. So, you could expose a Java facet on top of it, a JavaScript API, and in the end, you could, you could consume it in the same way as you would consume any of the um, dirigible APIs that are shipped by default. So I'm closing this one, and I'm continuing with the last demo, actually. And in the meantime, I'm going to stop the server and back to the root folder. Okay, so the, the last demo, it's about if I have uh, external dependency. So 
something that I've already built and I would just want to reuse how, how I can do it. Uh, and in that case, I'm using uh, one uh, dependency which are which is exposing um, uh, barcode functionality. So I'll be able to build barcodes for some reason and use it in my application. So I'm just going to copy paste it and <clears throat> I can put it either here in the O modules or in the link one. So I'm following uh, the same strategy and pasting it here. And I'm going to build the whole thing one more time. Okay. Switch to the link target folder. Start the application was then <coughs> okay so it seems that is a rank great i'm going to quickly switch out to the demo part and I'm going to copy that sample code, which I'm going to use in a bit. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask or interrupt me during the demo. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for me answering them. All right, so we're almost ready. So again, I'm going to create a new project. And if you wonder why uh, the, the demo project that I've initially created uh, was uh, was gone, uh, it is because I haven't configured a um, directory where my uh, files will be stored. And by default, they're uh, stored next to the jar file. And as you know, uh, during Maven clean install, uh, the the target files uh, the files inside the target folder are being clean and in that case also the the files for my uh, dirigible project that I've created in the previous demo so I'm going to create a new one new project so it will be let's say barcode and it will be new JavaScript service will be generator.js and I'm going to paste uh, the code and first we're going to see the result so I'm quickly uh, pasting it okay so maybe we've done something wrong great way to show you how yeah so this had to be actually not here but in the relink okay paste it do one more quick build and in the meantime i'll try to explain so um here as i said we are accessing yeah so this is done uh, let's start it again and just copy the content. So here we're um, <clears throat> uh, accessing the the barcode um, utility or the barcode framework uh, through a fully qualified name with uh, the packages prefix because it is coming with this uk.org um, uh, package name in the beginning and it's not allowed by default in GraalJS. Uh, we're actually here calling uh, Java um, methods. So this set uh, font name, set font size, etc. This is all uh, Java methods. Uh, this one is expecting expecting integer as an input. This one is, is taking uh, string. And here you could uh, see that we are actually building a, a Java image a buffered image, and uh, we have to call a bunch of methods in order to get it work, and so on. And in the end, let me see if that will work. So new project. This will be 
barcode. You file generator.js. All right, paste it, save it, and voila, we have the barcode. And if we would want to, let's say, change the content of the barcode, we could put uh, ECG, for example, for Eclipse Cloud Development, then rocks. Save it, and boom, we have uh, the barcode updated. So uh, basically, I've shown you uh, the basic ways how to extend um, Dirigible and how to rebrand it. And uh, you could actually resell it as you want. You can build, for example, uh, some platform that is uh, using only parts of Dirigible that is uh, being extended with your own uh, web ID uh, components uh, with additional perspective and etc. Uh, actually, we have. Uh, I'm going to uh, make this on a big screen. Okay. So if you go to the ID, you could see also how to uh, how to create your own uh, view, uh, your own perspective, and then how to contribute to the um, ID itself. So basically, this is the way how to. Uh, create your own ID and uh, to 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 extend the, the default one coming from Dirigible, but for at the time being, I, I won't have enough time to show you that, so you can try that this this one at home. Great, so that's from me. So, do you have any questions? I don't believe there's any question. Oh, just to make sure. So we have um, something that came in. It says just to make sure white labeling means that it is possible to run own Eclipse Digitable on a company resources and sell it to the end user as a product. Yes, exactly, exactly. That means so you could uh, just take uh, Eclipse Digitable as a free open source uh, project. Then you can rebrand it in the way that I've shown, uh, package it in, some way that you want to distribute to your uh, customers and sell it for how much you want. And you don't own anything to Eclipse or to the Dirigible community. Uh, okay, we have another to... question. Uh, what is an IDE behind it? And Thea? Uh, no, it's not Thea. The ID, so the um, editor itself is actually Monaco. Let me. Maybe I have to reshare again. Uh, just a second. Okay. Uh, so the editor here in the center of the screen is uh, Monaco. It's uh, the one that is used in Visual Studio Code as well. And we've embedded in Dirigible. On the left hand side, and at the bottom and uh, the whole shell, it is actually um, Angular JS plus uh, SAP Fundamental Library, which is another uh, open source um, uh, framework for building uh, visual components and so on. And even yesterday, we have uh, one of our colleagues, Stan uh, Genchev, uh, showing. Uh, how we actually did it, and uh, uh, I think uh, soon there will be a recording from the session, and we'll be sharing it on Twitter as well. So, no, it's not uh, here. Here, uh, it is, uh, let's say, dirigible opinionated framework based on AngularJS in the uh, SAP fundamental library that I told you. And we have a follow-up question. Is it possible to extend the workbench with uh, own plugins? Yes, yes. You can provide in the menu, uh, for example, a new item, let's say create new uh, file. So it could do uh, something totally different. And it is in the same way for all uh, UI components. In, in all places, you could uh, do it via extensions in the 
previous years we had uh, many sessions about how extensibility in dirigible actually works and how you can provide extensions and uh, yeah and we have some materials on on the site as well okay And then okay. there's, uh, is it possible to use VSIX extensions, V6 extensions? Mm, I think you're referring to Visual Studio extensibility capabilities. I'm not really sure what VSIX or VSIX is, but uh, most probably no, you won't be able to use it out of the box. If you have the source code like, uh, uh, standalone running um, web application. Yes, it can be embedded in the in the dirigible way of uh, doing things. So we have uh, some experiments in that uh, area as well. But it is not working out of the box. It yes, is the same thing for Open V6 as well. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like there is any more questions for right now. So I wanted to just thank you, uh, Jordan, for the excellent presentation. And just a reminder, again, if anyone does have any questions, please uh, put them in the Ask a Questions tab or the chat. Um, so if you are looking to book more Cloud Tool Time webinars throughout 2022, um, and if you're interested in presenting, feel free to fill out the form that I've included in the chat. Also, just a reminder to save the date. Uh, we have uh, Theacon uh, coming up November 30th and December um, 1st. So CFE is now officially open and registrations will be available as of early next week. All Thank right. You. So I think that that is everything. Thank you again, everyone. Have yourselves an amazing day and we'll be in touch very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.